I know, it's, uh, it's been a minute and I'm sorry about that. But suddenly there was just so many things going on. I mean, all good things, all great things. One really amazing thing. I, but it just, I mean, okay, this video is going to be a little bit of a catch up. I'm gonna fill you in on what's been going on. I'm going to tell you about some of, the, some of the plans I've got because I think it's important to put plans, ideas out there, even if they're just in their hatchling stage, because yeah, if they're, if they're just in my head, then that's usually where I, I keep them until like, until I just start talking about them, then the ball gets rolling. I believe that's what they call manifesting that shit. But yeah, I just needed a little bit of time to, to get on top of all the, the new changes. I mean, one of them is, is a massive, massive change. But I'm gonna talk about that at the, at the end of the video. I mean, the first thing is that I've, I've got a new job. Or, well, I've got a, I've got a new client because, one second. Yeah, if you're freelancing, then I guess you get to say cool things like, like you've got new clients. So what happened was this. I was along at Bergen Schild, which is this amazing menswear store here in Berlin. I was actually, they were helping me film a video about hemming your jeans and I will get to finishing that video at some point soon. Thank you very much. Months ago, I don't know, six months ago or so, I, I did a little like, um, class for them where I took them through some, some workflows, some shortcuts for social media. And I was just, I asked them how that was going. And they said, yeah, um, to be honest, we just don't have the, the time, the capacity to, to do it. So I offered, so I was like, yeah, listen, I've got some time in my schedule. Can I help you out? And they're like, yeah, uh, absolutely. Boom. I am now working for a very, very exciting menswear store and I'm also working with my mates, which is just so, so good. But yeah, doing the planning for that, doing the scheduling, uh, digging into the analytics, doing the style guide, it just, it put me completely on the back foot time-wise that week and so I, I had to skip a video. But I did have a plan, which got completely knocked into a cocked hat the following week when I got sent along to do another shoot for another client. I don't know if I ever mentioned it to you guys before, but I am the designer for a furniture company called Kentholtz. We make absolutely beautiful oak furniture and we also specialize in crafting terrazzo work surfaces like in the old traditional way. Shameless plug for my other gig, done. But anyway, yeah, we had this really, really big, amazing job on and there was this very, very slim window of time when, when all the workmen were out of there, when everything was complete, everything was clean, and before the public were allowed in. So I had to suddenly just drop everything, rush along and take the pictures. And yet you could not imagine a worse set of, of, of circumstances for taking nice interior shots. I mean, it's, it's a really beautiful space. It's got like glass on all three walls. It's got beautiful vistas out to either side. I say out to one side, the other side, like a nasty street. But anyway, beautiful vistas off the two sides, but the weather was terrible. The light completely changed from being complete darkness to bright sun. So I was there for, for hours. The, the pictures were all over the place and there was a lot of editing, like really a lot of editing to get even like half a dozen consistent shots. But yeah, with, with the Bergen Shield work, we, we shoot on Tuesdays for the following week. And then with this suddenly coming up, yeah, that was another week just suddenly gone and, and no video. Shit, but yeah, next week. Next week swung around. We had this huge life-changing appointment on the Monday, but that's the thing I'm gonna tell you about at the end of the video. See, I'm, I'm learning, I'm creating suspense. I'm, I'm keeping you guys hooked. You guys are still there, right? Is it working? Are you guys feeling, feeling the suspense, the tension? Let me know in the comments below. And is this the start of me sounding like a proper YouTube douche? Also, let me know in the comments below. And while you're on your way down there, you're gonna be passing the like button, you're gonna be passing the subscribe button. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're into menswear or denim, if you're, 
if you're into me rambling like I'm doing just now, okay, I'm gonna stop this. But yeah, if you, if you did leave a like and you did subscribe, that would be absolutely amazing. So, life-changing appointment on the Monday, then the Bergen Shields shoot on the Tuesday, plus all the editing and blah, blah, blah. Then my normal Kent Holtz work, sandwiched in around all of that then suddenly down to Dusseldorf for another shoot. Another thing that I do is I help 360 now over here in Europe. I mean, over the past couple of years, travel's been virtually impossible or certainly not such a good idea. And I think in general, just having boots on the ground over here, I, I think it's always a good idea. 316 do these, these articles called Retailer Spotlights where they, they do an interview and a shoot at a store that carries the brand. And this time we wanted to cover stuff fine goods down in Dusseldorf. So I packed the camera, some pants, some socks, and off I go. It was a great trip. It was really a lot of fun. It was fantastic to catch up with Thomas and Jan. Guys, thank you so much for the hospitality. It's super, super appreciated. If you're in Dusseldorf, even if you're anywhere around Dusseldorf, stuff fine goods is really, really worth the visit. It's, it's an incredible place for, for everything that, that we love about menswear. I hope the pics are coming out okay. I've edited a few of them. They're looking, they're looking good, they're looking fine. I don't really want to toot my own horn too hard. Yeah, they're gonna serve the purpose to, to give you an idea about the vibe about the store. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna let you know when the retailer spotlight hits the 316 website. Yeah, so super fun, super good trip, but again, just no time for a video. But now, this week, right now, now it's time. And actually, before I go on, I just want to say thank you to, to a couple of you that reached out and asked if, if everything was okay, because you noticed that I, I hadn't been publishing for a couple of weeks. So, I mean, with, with all the content that's just being blasted at us all the time, it's, it's really touching the, that you notice my absence. So, so guys, you know who you are and thank you so much. Okay, some, some Denim and Johns content for, for all of you guys who are just here for, for the Denim and Johns. And yeah, I do split these two things up. There's denim, there's John's. But today, actually, there's just denim content. There's gonna be John's content later. First off, my go-to jeans at the moment. But I think, uh, first, first off, I need to set up the lights. I was being lazy. I was hoping gonna get away with uh, just daylight. But I forgot that in October in Germany, there's, there's no such thing as daylight. It's just a rumor. So yeah, my, my go-to jeans at the moment are, are these. My 316 101XS. These are the ones that I did the, did the stone wash video on a few months ago, and there'll be a link to that up in the corner somewhere. But hang out for that big news, that, that hang out for the suspense. This is why I don't like fucking around with lights when I can possibly avoid it. And if I suddenly do go missing again, then there's a high likelihood that I'm dead because I've had an electric shock from, from this little power adapter here because, yeah, this, this isn't good. I mean, you, you saw that spark, right? That's, that's not healthy. Right, hopefully that's a little bit better. Is that any better? I've got to invest in new lights at some point, but uh, yeah, that, that's going to come later. Right, the jeans. They are a 12 ounce Kabata denim. Uh, that's been given a, a nice even stone wash. These are not trying to be a faded pair of jeans. They're, they are a stone wash pair of jeans. And I find that to be a huge difference. And with that 12 ounce Kabata denim and with the stone washing, they are just so damn easy, just so damn nice to wear. I had them hemmed. All 316s come in a 36 inch inseam. That's way, way too long for me. So I had them hemmed up along a Bergen Schild. Ella, thank you very much. That's very much appreciated. I left just enough to have a, a little bit of a cuff so I can have fun with the cuffing. With the wider fit, so I actually, I sized up on these one inch because I, I wanted really like, that, that wider leg, I wanted that kind of like oversized look with these. And so with that, I've been, I've been falling back to my old firm favorite, the pin roll. With the tapered jeans that I've been wearing over the last couple of years, yeah, the pin roll wasn't really necessary, but with these, I, I think it really works. I've been going to that when I've been wearing a pair of trainers like Mount Vesta high tops, for example, or, or my Alden boots. Yeah, it really, I think it works for that. When it comes to a bulkier boot, so either my Viberg Ropers or maybe the, the hikers that I have, 
Yeah, I, I just do a pretty messy cuff and just sort of let them fall for the will. I think, I think for, that, for that level of bulk with the boot, I think that works best. I can't really say that these are a project pair because I mean, let's face it, they're, they're not gonna fade. And anyway, I don't really do project pairs anymore. But yeah, with this denim and with its fit, they've just been perfect for the last few weeks where I've been traveling around and when I've been scrambling around on the floor to get a good angle for a photo. You, you won't believe the weird contorted positions that you have to get yourself in to get a decent angle sometimes. But I mean, yeah, my knees are not what they were three weeks ago. But yeah, so fits, denim, the denim weight is perfect. And also with, with this tone, with this wash, it's just, it's the perfect thing to pair with other denim pieces. And that was hopefully a nice segue onto the shirt. This is the Indica Fira Fargo, the unsamphorized denim one that I did a video on a few few months ago. I'd link up in the corner somewhere. Yeah, I've been wearing this shirt a lot, like really a lot. Because, I mean, look how look how well that goes. It just it, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Like the two tones. Yeah. Mwah. Right. So yeah, I've been wearing it as an overshirt, not as a shirt. It's a little bit heavy for a shirt, I think. And also, I don't want to stank it up with with bo because. I'm a little bit afraid of getting a lot more shrink on this. So Thomas from Denim Hunters, he got the same one. He got it, actually I believe he got it true to size. And yeah, after he'd washed it, after he'd given it the soap, uh, he had to stretch it out from wet. And I know myself, I am just far, far too lazy to do anything like that. So yeah, actually come to think of it, because I've noticed this over the past few weeks, it stretched out a bit in the arms, like, it was maybe sitting like like here before. Now it's got a centimeter, centimeter and a half. I mean, that makes sense. You're moving the arms all the time and stretching out over the elbows. But yeah, I don't, I don't want it any shorter in the body. So yeah, I'm trying to maximize the time between washes and seeing water. The, the denim, the denim has got so super nice and soft. It was a little bit crispy when it came out the second soak. First soak, second soak. I gave it two soaks. It's a little bit crispy when it came out of the water that time. I, but yeah, that's all fallen away and it's got so super luxurious and soft. The unsamphorized denim is the only way to get this kind of, of texture on the denim, in my opinion. Or like, at least like, rinsed denim will do the same thing, but that's just soaking at the factory. So yeah, it's basically the same thing. There's no fades yet, but there are there's fade potential, let's say. With the shirt and with the jeans and, well, with all jeans or trousers or whatever, I've been wearing in the Show Your Hem belt. Uh, again, did a video on that a while ago, links up in the corner somewhere. Yeah, so that's the natural veg tan belt from the Indonesian brand Show Your Hem. I got a wallet, right? The belt's looking nice, but I got a wallet at the same time. And that's just looking, that, that's looking super nice. It's getting to, to show some, some of the start of the patina that's going to really make it, it's going to give it a lot of character in the long run. So yeah, that's the wallet and the belt. One last thing to catch you up on in terms of denim at the moment, which is not here. Where did I leave that? Back in a second. This. So this is the Benzac. That's not the Benzac. This is the Benzac, what's it, BDJ04 trucker jacket, Sherpa line trucker jacket, something like that. Anyway, it's, it's a denim jacket from Benzac Denim Developers in a super fade denim. And that super fade denim, well, kind of does what it says in the tin, it fades super fast. The thing is, okay, I got this as a review piece last November and then the weather changed just like this it got super super cold and so I didn't get very much of a chance to wear it it came it came out like in the sort of springtime so it got a month or so there and then yeah when the shitty weather started here in Berlin it came out of storage again and I've been wearing it pretty much constantly for the last couple of weeks that, that's really that's not a long time like that's a couple of months maximum maybe two and a half months maximum. That's not a long time for, for even a pair of jeans, let alone a jacket, because jackets, selvage denim jackets, or raw selvage denim jackets, raw denim jackets, they are notoriously hard to fade. 
with a super fade denim that's going to take care of that because it's meant to fade super fast and it's starting to fade a little bit. I'm starting to see a little bit of the fading coming out. I got completely soaked two weeks ago at one of the Berg and Shield suits. Sh suits? One of the Berg and Shield shoots. Yeah, I got soaked through. They, they were fine. They were like taking care of all the nice expensive clothing underneath like a, a building somewhere. But Muggsy here was out in the street taking pictures of them. And I, I hope the camera is still working because it got soaked as well. But anyway, it's top tip if you want to kickstart your fades in anything, get soaked and cycle around the city for the rest of the day. Actually, really, uh, don't do that because I'm very lucky I didn't catch a cold. Yeah, I guess this is going to come out really quite nice and I guess it's going to come out quite contrasty. I mean, in the, so around about the cuffs when I'm seeing that, we're getting that kind of alive electric blue from the indigos that starts to fade and there's the, the white core of the yarn starts to come through. And I'm quite curious how it's going to look around about sort of when you're getting the honeycombs and the arms here because the, the Sherpa lining does add a little bit of bulk to the jacket. I mean, that's yeah, to be expected. So the, the honeycombs aren't quite as like crisp and defined as you get with an unlined denim jacket, just makes sense. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see how that's developing. And then overall, yeah, you're starting to see fades coming through where you expect, around about the buttonholes, around about the pockets. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep you updated on that, but this is finally starting to fade. It's actually, it is fading super fast. It's just, I've not worn it that much. Okay, so that is the state of the denim at the moment. That needs to be adjusted. Yeah, that's the state of the denim at the moment. Uh, what's the future got in store? Well, I've got to finish off the hemming video. It's way too hot for this jacket in here. Yeah, I've got to finish off the hemming video. That might be a bit all over the place because it's so long ago that I filmed it. And yeah, it's not gonna be the nice, crisp, concise narrative I hoped, but we'll see what we can make out of it. The information from, from Kai and the guys at Bergen Shield is super, super good. So yeah, want to finish that off. Then I have the Ironheart jeans to talk about. So they were one of the pairs that was getting a hemmed along at Bergen Shield. Yeah, I've got to talk about them. Y you know what, I, you guys know this. I was never the, the heavy denim guy. I didn't really quite get the whole sort of Ironheart army thing in the, the militant manner that uh, Ironheart fans seem to have. I still am maybe not completely like a convert to the heavy denim certainly certainly not but i i'm starting to understand it yeah i really am but yeah we're going to talk about that in that whole video another video that i've been meaning to do for a really really long time is taking a pair of of good raw selfish denim jeans and comparing them with a pair of fashion jeans at the equivalent price actually you know what just let's get that started right now Ugh. I saw, I've, as you guys can imagine, I have, I have a lot of pairs of, of salvage denim jeans that I can use, but I definitely don't have the fashion jeans. And I need to find somewhere that's got a very good return policy because if I'm dropping 200 bucks on these fashion jeans, I'm certainly not going to keep them. They need to go back. Okay, so my easiest choices that are either going to be Amazon or Zalando. Uh, I, if you don't know Zalando, it's uh, a huge online retailer here in Europe. And I think I'm going to go for Zalando because they're going, I mean, Amazon's an everything thing. Zalando is a clothes thing. So I guess they are going to have a better selection. Okay, let's have a look. Right, men's uh, clothing jeans. Sort by, sort by price. Okay, um, what jeans am I going to use? The only jeans that I, I have um, that are brand new, unworn, untouched are the ones that are in the, the sample box from 316. I, I guess the guys are not going to mind me dipping into those. So yeah, I'm going to use a pair of 316s. Um, probably, which one? Let's see. I'm going to use the SL100X. I, I think that's just a very good all-round fit and it's the perfect example of a good, a very good pair of raw selfish denim jeans and how much do they come, 215, how much are they, 215 dollars, how much do they come in, uh, in Europe, who sells those? Uh, brands 316. 
There we are, the SLs. They are 230. Okay, so that's my budget. I've got 230 euros to spend on these fashion jeans. Can't believe I'm doing that. Right, okay, so let's put it up to, it goes up to 608 euros. What is available for 608 euros? Ugh. That's in the sale. These are 760 and they're, they're in the sale for, for, for 6720. They are hideous. You know, I, I would actually just like to get my hands in those just to see what can be justified in, in spending that much money on, on those. But right, yeah, anyway. Um, so I'll put that at 200 and then I'll put that at 235. There we go. Save, there we go. Right, okay, what's the choices we have? Seven for all mankind. Uh, oh, nudie jeans. That, that, you, on Zalando, there's a lot of junk, but there are some good brands there as well. So don't discount it completely. Yeah, nudie jeans, seven all my kind, seven for all my kind. Uh, oh, Versace. Mm, Diesel. When did diesels get that expensive? Closed. Yeah, there's another one, like nudie and closed. Like I, I cannot recommend those jeans more. They're, they're really, really good. Um, Armani, Versace again, Dondop, never heard of, uh, a lot of Dondops, um, Diesel, seven o'clock, uh, closed again, Diesel, Diesel, Bologlioni, right, you know what, I'm, I wanted these to be fashion with a capital F jeans, so I'm going to go for either the Versace or the Armani, um, where are they, okay, there's the Armani ones, open a new tab, and um, where were the Versace ones, there we are. You know, the Versace ones don't actually look all that bad. Uh, there's a nice wash to them. They, they seem, the, the fit's a bit skinny, but yeah, they're Versace. Right, okay, yeah. And directly, no. I and mean, yeah, just look at that pocket. That is, uh, I, I know these are a thing and it's Versace and that's a bit ostentatious, but I just, just know. Armani, I'm gonna go for these because I'm very, very curious to see what justifies an original price of 270, 15% off at 230. The wash is, is weird, like really, really weird. It almost goes from raw denim to complete white with a rip in the knee. Uh, and these are ones, these are not trying to be stone washed or anything, they are trying to fake fade. So, yeah, let's have a closer look. Yeah, they're, they're nowhere near as ostentatious as the, the Versace ones, but they are something that I would never really ever come into contact with, so I'm looking forward to seeing what's gonna justify that price, if they have it my size. Um, 33 times 32, that sounds right. Add to bag, go to bag. Okay, for this bit, I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to turn off this camera because I don't want you to see my, my credit card number, which is seems sensible. Go to checkout. Okay, that delivery address. I can get them next Monday. Okay, I'm going to spend the extra 25 cents to offset the carbon footprint. 230 euros on jeans that hideous. That's me being very judgmental. I'm sure some people get them and very happy with them. But would they be happier with a pair of good, raw, salvage denim jeans? I, I think they would be. Pay now. There we go, they're on the way. So that video is also on the way. Right, a couple of more things before that really, really big thing that I was talking about. Uh, do you guys remember months and months ago, years ago, I did a very, very short-lived series called FTC. The whole idea behind this series would be that once a week I would bring to you like four or five things that were cool enough for me to, when I was browsing around the interwebs or wherever I was, to like come across and just like take a pause and just think, fuck, that, that's cool. I thought it was a cool idea. I, nobody else did though. I mean, like it was, it just tanked like, I kind of get it, the, the subjects were very, very far away, or some of the subjects were very, very far away from the normal thing I talk about. 
So yeah, I kind of just quit those. It wasn't being good. It wasn't good for the channel. It was taking too much time away from other things. I, I still think it's a good idea. I really do. And I think it's a much better idea for a newsletter. And so I want to get a newsletter rolling. I've got as far as setting up a sign up page over on the website. There's a link to the down below in the description. And yeah, go over there, sign up for that. And I promise that in the not too distant future, you're gonna get an email from me with four or five things that you're gonna stop and you're gonna go like, Matt's right, fuck, this is cool. There was two things that I wanted to tell you before the big reveal, but I've forgotten the second one. I, so I updated the sales page over on the website. Um, if you're looking for a bargain, then that really is worth checking out. Uh, there's a link below to that in the description as well. But I don't think that was it. No, that, that wasn't it. I'm, I'm really showing my age. I'm gonna be 40 in about a week. We're flying off to Cyprus for that. That's the first time on, the, on a plane with my girl and that's the first time on a plane since the pandemic hit, which is a break. I, I, as I said, I, I love Germany. I love living in Berlin, but definitely a year and a half, longer than a year and a half without going anywhere else it's, it's enough time. Right, okay, no, that was it. So I'm thinking, I, I've got the idea in my head to do like a little mini series about building a minimalist wardrobe. I know, I know, I am so not a minimalist, really, I, I, I'm definitely not. But I think that there is something to be said for, for building a quality minimalist wardrobe. And everything that's out there just now seems to be very concentrated on like, buy 10 cheap t-shirts and just throw them away when they're, they're no good anymore. Buy a pair of skinny black jeans, a beanie and a bomber and you're good. There doesn't seem to be really any info or none that I could find on, on buying the best uh, fit for your body type um, for, for putting a, a big importance on the quality of the pieces that you're buying. Because if you're only having a few of them, then they should really be of, of a higher quality because so they're gonna last the longest time. And if the whole point of this is simplifying your life, then you want these pieces to last. Yeah, what else? I mean, there's, there, there's so much to unpick here. And even though I might not be, be a minimalist, I do hope that I know a little bit about buying quality garments. And I hope I know a little bit about putting together a decent wardrobe and maximizing your minimalist options, which might not be the point here, but I, everybody needs, a, unless you're one of these really crazy minimalists, I think everybody needs a little bit of versatility with, within the clothing that you have. And I, I think giving a little bit of thought to this would really help people out and really allow them to, to have fewer, better clothes, which I think I picked that up from Standard and Strange. So uh, shout out Standard and Strange for letting me um, pick up your, your tagline. But anyway, what do you guys think? Is it a you? Is it a nay? Do we have any minimalist watching at all? But right, it's finally here. The moment of the big reveal. Okay, but actually, be before we get to that, and this isn't to create suspense, this is just me wanting to say, guys, like really genuinely thank you for, for tuning in again. I'm sorry for the, the long break. I hope all of you are, are happy. I hope you're healthy. Please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video. But here it is, I'm gonna be a dad.